Hey, that's a little better. All right, let's make sure I got this pulled up here. Uh, Neptune 3 Max is next, right? I wish. I hope. I'm not, I'd be a liar if I said I wasn't unboxing this specifically because I'm going to request a Neptune 3 Max. But, uh, yeah. Uh, really want to check out the Neptune 3 Max. Haven't had any word from Elegoo. I'm not very high on uh, Elegoo's seating list, quite apparently, since this is the original ne Neptune 3. I received this printer... Um, the week the Pro came out, the way the week the Neptune 3 Pro came out, they reached out to me and said, hey, because I, I requested a Neptune 3 when it first launched or was first announced, and I requested it, and they said, oh, we'll get you on as soon as we can. Awesome. They hit me back up and said, hey, we can get you on now. Great. And then that same week, they launched the Neptune 3 Pro. So it's like, thanks for not telling me you had a new printer coming out when you're sending me the last one, but hey. I figured if nothing else, we can hang out, chat, chill out, and get a printer built, so. And the S1, the S1 Pro. I have an Ender 5 S1. I can tell you right now, the next unboxing is an Ender 5 Pro, uh, Ender 5 S1. I have one of those, but I had to get to this first. Is the address okay to stream? It's fine. It's my P.O. box. It's on my website. Thank you for the concern, but... The it's on my website. Let's check the second camera angle quick. It's working. So let's build a 3D printer and not play with scissors. Uh, have I seen the customizable kit of the Rat Rig Minion, the V Minion? I mean, is there a new kit or just the standard Rat uh, V Minion kit? I've seen it. I don't really have a lot of interest in building one personally, but. No overhead rig this week. So I gotta start pulling parts out of the box here. I do not have a P1P on the way. Uh, I haven't ordered a P1P and Bamboo has never sent me anything. So, um, you know, I have the X1 and I'm just like, why would I, why would I care about the, the P1P? Like, don't get me wrong, the P1P seems awesome for a lot of users. And yes, for review purposes, it'd be great, but I couldn't justify spending $700 on a printer just to review after everybody else who already got one ahead of time reviewed it. So. Right, right, reviews are value, thank you. Yeah. Ah. All right, top piece of foam here. We get our user manual. Filament spool holder. I like the design of the Elegoo spool holders. I do. It's kind of cool. Uh, how do I? How am I liking the X1, the bamboo? I go both ways on it. I'm not in love with it. There's no passion there for me with the X1 because it's just a plug-and-play machine. I don't think it's as plug and play as I would like it to be for that fact. They really need to tune their filament profiles, their slicing profiles. Could really use some work. Power supply in black. I can say that. The aesthetics of Elegoo, they've got them nailed down. Um, the X1. My review, I, I, I do intend to still review the X1 and that'll come sometime soon once I can find some time. Honestly, probably won't be till January. I'm like way too swamped right now. But I thought about this a few weeks ago. I was doing something. Oh, I wanted to, to I wanted to modify the X1 in a way that was going to possibly brick it and ruin it. And I didn't have any way of like, what was I going to do? And it, I realized that I would be upset if the X1 broke. It's basically what it came down to. I didn't acknowledge it before that moment, but I realized I would be upset if the X1 broke. And when I realized that I would be upset if the X1 broke, that kind of changed my opinion on it a little bit. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Uh, I, that's obviously, it's not an endorsement, it's not a review, but I did realize I would be sad if it wasn't working. So, yeah, we've got, ah. I went to pull the Z-axis out of the box and it's attached to the 
the base. <laughs> Scared my dog away. <sighs> okay, let's uh, get this out of here. That was annoying. Stay. Cool. All right. Make sure I got chat pulled up properly here. Live chat, there we go. Have an Ender uh, 5S1 on the on route. Cool, yeah, I, I got mine in like a week or so ago. I just haven't had any time for these unboxings. And this one was here first, so I have to get to this one before I get to the Ender 5S1. I might do that randomly. Okay. We're unboxing the, uh, the Neptune 3. Let's talk about what I'm seeing at the moment. I love that it comes with a double-sided PEI sheet that is um, smooth on one side and textured on the other. Love it. I don't love it. There's not guides on the back of it to like tell you where to put it. That's annoying. Uh, Nathan unboxed his the other day. Uh, is this, this is the Neptune 3, the plain Neptune 3. Elegoo sent me this one, the plain Neptune 3, the week that the Neptune 3 launched. I was mildly miffed by that, and I might have, like, waited to unbox this one a little bit, to, uh, because of that. <laughs> Alright, that's it. That's what's in the box. We've got the printer, we got the Z-axis upright, I mean the base with the electronics. And I gotta get to the hardware to get this thing put together a little bit. Wanted to get this, but picked up the SVO6. Yeah, Soval's never sent me anything. I have no relationship with Soval. I think I requested something before and I forget. Alright, hardware. That's what we need. Uh, they should look at a way to unbox so you pull the box in, easily remove the foam like the bamboo. Here's the problem with that. Expense. If they had a fully assembled printer like this that came out of the box and had to have all that packing material and the like box is three times the size it is now just to house it, it would cost them significantly more to ship it. When you're talking about a $1,400 printer like the Bamboo X1, they can do that, and their shipping, their shipping isn't cheap, so, um, yeah, it's just kind of the way it goes. All right. How easy is it to change the Bowden setup to direct drive? On what? On this machine, or, that's the wrong size bit. I'll use the ridiculously large handle. Side note. I just got a uh, iFixit toolkit in, uh, the Manta Pro, or yeah, their Manta kit. I always thought that iFixit might be like, I don't know, everybody talks iFixit. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, I'm sure it's better than the cheap stuff I buy, but like, can't be that much better. This is a CNC machined aluminum driver with a bearing in the end cap of the CNC machined end cap. This thing I could probably bludgeon somebody with. Uh, on the Neptune 3, I have no idea. To my knowledge, they don't sell a, any upgrade kit. They should. Uh, Creality took a while to do that with the S1, then selling the Sprite separately. So, I don't know. I would like to see it if they did, but they'll probably just tell you to buy the Pro if you want direct drive. Whew. All right, let's get this in here. I'm gonna pop the bottom cover off in a minute. We'll see what electronics are in this thing, because I am curious what mainboard they're running. Did they change it to, is it still a Robin Nano? What is it? Get started in there. Oh, just put the items in a bag so you can like pull out individually. Yeah, like the way they get like hammered in or crammed in there, I don't know. How does iFixit compare to the Linus screwdriver? Um, totally different animals. Just different beasts. Give me a second. LTT screwdriver, lttstore.com. There's this hex wrench stuck to it because the magnet's so strong. Um, 
Okay, LTT screwdriver. I love the back cap bit storage. I've grown to really like that. I think that's the size I need right now. Yeah. Grown to really like that. Um, you know, it's ratcheting. That's the thing. The iFixit is not. It's just a driver. So, just a plain Jane driver versus that. The driver is smaller, obviously. This one is the quarter inch driver. That uses quarter inch bits. And this is the 5 16 driver that accepts. I don't think these swap over, right? Will these fit into the iFixit? Yeah, they do fit in the iFixit. 3D Puck with the five pounds. Thank you very much. That is appreciated. 3D Puck. I always say that. 3D P, P U K. I know I've said that before. I always get screwy with your name, but thank you. Get yourself a brew. Thank you. Maybe I'll go get a coffee after this. I thought about getting the X1 uh, AMS purely for the AMS, but decided to save a ton of money, ordered an uh, enraged rabbit carrot feeder kit. Understandable. Um, I keep looking at this camera and not that camera. Um, I don't have any experience with an enraged rabbit. I want to build one just to play with it and try it. The AMS is the absolute, if you are looking for a multicolor 3D printing experience and you want the least fuss, that is the one thing I can absolutely say the X1 Carbon does well. Compared to the Palette 3 Pro or to the Tai Chi hot end with dual inputs from Fetus, whatever, the AMS is a great multicolor experience in comparison. Um, honestly, the LTT screwdriver, I got sidetracked there. This is what happens in lives if you're not familiar. I have massive ADD and I jump all over the place. Um, the LTT screwdriver is the best quality ratcheting screwdriver I have ever personally used. And I was an auto technician, a custom car builder, and I sold tools for a living. I used to sell Matco tools, so I have experienced a lot of quality tools. This is the best ratcheting screwdriver I've ever used. Is it worth the increased price over some of the other options on the market? I don't know about that, but I really like this thing. If you're willing to support LTT and, you know, uh, spend a little bit of money on getting a nice tool. I call it the best merch I've ever seen. Because, like, it's not a t-shirt that I'm going to wear five times and then be embarrassed to wear or whatever. It's a tool. I aspire, I aspire to someday have merch this cool. I'll have t-shirts before then, but... <laughs> Keybird Prince! Hey, man! I uh, wanted to say thank you for always posting random short snippets of what you're working on. I find those videos just as cool as enjoyable as your edited videos as it's really inspiring me to switch over to doing edited content and short form. Winging it. Just had that screwdriver to my cart. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And I'm glad to hear that. Um, you know, I'll tell you the truth. Honestly, I was doing YouTube for years. Um as Hot Rod Hippie, doing my car and metal fabrication content. I did that for quite a long time. And when I really became much more natural on camera and felt more comfortable and all of that is when I started doing the short form stuff on TikTok and was just, you know, pumping out videos every day. And it really helped me find my voice as a creator, if that makes sense. Um, Great grip, can really grip the tri-lobe design. I love tri-lobe screwdrivers, so that, that helps. Like my favorite screwdrivers, I don't have any of them here right now, they're over my toolbox, but um, is the Vis. Uh, Vis, they're a German company. They make Matco screwdrivers for them. I really like those, they're a tri-lobe design. All right, we've got that on there. Let's check how square this is though. I'm curious, how square out of the box is the Z-axis to the Y. It could use a shim, but it's good enough for the moment. Yeah, the Z-axis is leaning forward a hair, maybe a degree. So it could use 
It could use a shimming, uh, but I'm going to roll with it for now. I'm not going to do that on a stream. So, got to get the Z-axis motor plugged in. Uh, did I work dealer tech or indie? Both. Uh, I was a Mitsubishi dealership technician, my very first job in the industry. Why is this pinched? Ah, I just pinched the Z-axis limit switch motor wire under the Z-axis motor. Um, yeah, I was a dealer tech at Mitsubishi and I worked a couple of independent shops before I moved into custom cars. And then I spent the majority of my automotive career working on customizing and restoration. So, worked a couple years in, worked two years in dealership. I don't know how many years in independent, honestly. Two or three years of selling tools and then the rest over a decade in, um, Nice, you're in the trade. Are you a dealer tech or a independent? I, you know, it's weird. I really liked both. I liked the difference of uh, independent, where you just never knew what the next thing. Twenty-one years with Honda, cool, cool. Yeah, I liked. I liked that you never knew what was coming in the door with independent, which was a good and a bad thing. It was a different challenge every day. But then, it's also just really, really nice to work in a dealership and know the cars in and out, so you can diagnose easier and you know beat the times and then you're just really refining your skill that was also fun so i'm i'm preaching to the choir on that one i'm sure all right uh gotta get the power supply on here before we get the power supply on let's pop the bottom cover off and have the support you need to get fixed stuff fixed yeah let's pop the bottom cover off and see what main board they're using in this thing because I'm curious. And these screws are annoying. Oh, that's a trilobe, jackass. Uh, fleet tech for a plumbing company is 70 vehicles and 50 of them are the same. It's nice. See, like that would be... That would both be boring to me and also just really satisfying to always know what's next. And if you're a fleet tech, you're working on literally the same vehicles all the time. You know what happened last time. That's that's some powerful stuff, you know, always knowing what was the last repair done or whatever. Reality 4.2.2. Uh, I'd be amazed by that. It's got quiet drivers, so it's definitely not going to be that. Maybe a 4.2.7. Ain't no way I'm spinning these out by hand. The power of electric. Ah, oh, boss has toys you get to work on. Okay, well that's more fun. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Like, I would get bored, but I have massive... ADD, I have to always keep myself uh, stimulated or else I shut down. Which is why this job works out so well for me. All right, look at the electronics case. We have a Robin Nano V2.1, but the ZNP Robin Nano, not the real legit maker base Robin Nano. So this is the clone that they used. Well, this is a newer version of the clone board they used in the, ne Neptune, the Neptune 2. So, exactly the same as last time. Ah, uh, wow, they hot glued the hell out of everything. So, nothing new, nothing surprising in there. Alright, throw this back on. Only 209 on their website. Uh, what, the, the Neptune 2? Or the Neptune 3 right now? I'll have to link to their website, because the link I put in the description is to uh, Amazon, and it was $2.59 there. I can give up. Uh, it is a blower for board cooling. Yeah, they use a 5015 fan for board cooling in the Neptunes. It's a little bit of a weird choice. It works. Um, it works, but I don't know. It's a weird choice. One thing I don't love about it is it's not very ducted. I mean... 
a blower fan is going to have fairly directed airflow, but it's fairly far away from the actual electronics that need to be cooled. Yeah, if, um, what do you call it? Uh, okay, so it's 209 on their website. I'll definitely update the description later. Pro is 230 on their website. Wow. I'm shaky today. All right, I'll definitely update the description later on then because this, uh, the price on Amazon is not good. I tried to sign up for an affiliate account with uh, Elegoo earlier this week and they denied me because my website is um, incomplete. It's still in like the uh, the building stage. Uh, out of stock in the U.S. See, Amazon has stock of them. In fact, I think they shipped me this one through Amazon, if I remember right. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Uh, did I miss something back there? Daryl. Did I miss somebody ask? Oh, I'm going to put a silent board on my Ender 3 Pro and a CR Touch. Uh, which one should I put on first? Uh, I would put the silent board on first. I'm not a huge fan... That's loose. I'm not a huge fan of um, auto bed leveling on such small printers personally. So I would definitely put a silent board in first. My recommendation would be the... Yep. Yeah. Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3. I really like this board. So I like the Big Tree Tech boards in general. They unlock a little more power than the uh, Creality ones do, and they can often, when on sale, be found cheaper than the Creality 4.2.7. So that would be my recommendation. Starter resin printer. Um, Any Cubic has some pretty good ones. The uh, the mono. I would say stick with a mono screen. You can buy the monos on sale these days pretty cheap because they moved on to their M3 line. I have the Anycubic Photon M3, and I really like that. It's bigger than the Mono, has a good screen resolution. I think it's worth the little bit of extra money, but I don't have a ton of resin experience, so take that with a bit of grain of salt. I got rid of my regular Photon to go with a, um, with to use the M3. Uh, the Ele the Neptune 3 Plus is coming out. I'm really looking forward to checking out the Neptune 3 Max. Um, well, I say looking forward to. I don't know if I'm going to get one or not. Uh, if I can get my hands on one, I'd love to because I really want to compare it to the Cobra Max. Because for the price and the fact that it's direct drive, it seems like it should be a vastly superior machine for the money. Um... Uncle Jesse recommends the Elegoo Mars, and Clayton knows a lot better than I do, so that's a solid source for resin stuff. Akuma Mods and Uncle Jesse are my go-to recommendations for resin stuff. All right, I gotta put the power supply on here. Starter printer. Um... I usually recommend the Creality Ender 3 as my go-to recommendation for a starter printer because, sorry, <sighs> here's a problem, the LTT screwdriver. It only comes with three metric bits out of the box. It comes with three, 2.5, and, no wait, yeah, four, 2.5, and two? Yeah, two. So it skips right over three. That's 5.30 seconds. That's not what I need. Actually, mm, my fifth. $120 on their website. Jeez, that's better than the freaking Black Friday sale I put up for it. On Black Friday, the uh, the Neptune 3 was... Um, where did I put that? Oh. On Black Friday, the Neptune 3 was... Or Neptune 2 was... 130 So that's even better. Honestly... The Neptune 2 is probably a solid starter printer then. For that, if 120 bucks, 
Like, I can't say this is going to be $100 more valuable, but Mars 2 is 100 bucks too. Wow. I have to keep a better eye out on deals. Can't find my bit drivers. There's a three. I got too many tool sets. I need to organize this side of the shop. I usually recommend the Ender 3 because of the wide wealth of information available for it. Like these printers are upgrades over the Ender 3. Absolutely. But if you search for like Neptune 3 error message or something, like you're not gonna find as much information as you will with an Ender 3. And for somebody just starting out, that's valuable information. So it's, it's hard for me to say like, yeah, this is a better printer, but don't buy it. You know, it's, it's weird. Because what a lot of people miss or lose sight of, I feel like, is that everybody has to learn. And if you're getting a starter printer, you're not going to have the knowledge that you might need to diagnose problems um, that... Meh, that you might need. There we go. Got my Ender 3 on your wreck, and I love it. I've upgraded a lot over the year, and quality uh, out of the box was even was killer. Yeah, I mean, you can do quality work with an Ender 3 just fine. Uh, it takes some time to get it really good, but it takes time to get really good with just about anything. So, stuff on their site shipped from China. I have no idea. Um, that's probably likely. I find ship... Shipping from China is hit or miss, but for me, for the most part, it's pretty good. Like, I often get printers shipped to me from China and within two weeks, less than two weeks, so. Ugh. All right, power supply is on. Make the power connection. Boom. What's the site to all the Ender 3 Maw upgrades and information? Oh, there's every website. YouTube, youtube.com. Um, got a coaxial, not a coax, a uh, RJ11 phone connector for the touch screen. Get this on here. I love that they moved the screen out from under the bed. That drove me nuts on the Neptune 2. On the, on the Neptune 2, the screen was mounted here. And when the printer was printing, you couldn't hit the buttons without the bed hitting you in the hand. Pre-owned machines are dirt cheap. I wonder if they're worth it. If you have the knowledge, if you have the knowledge, sure. Um, I don't recommend pre-owned machines for people starting out. Uh, if you're talking about like factory recertified machines or something, they're usually fine. I bought uh, from Comgrow, I bought an Ender 3 refurb once. It was literally just an open box printer. Like somebody returned it, whatever. I think it was missing like one screw and I was able to put it together. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Missing SD card and the spool holder. That Bowden tube is like sagged. Oh, okay. Is that not thread in from the other side? Weird. Guess it's supposed to thread in this side. Micro Center usually has Ender 3s for 100 bucks. If you can find the coupon and you're a new customer, yeah, I've done it before. All right, there's that. Oh, that's for the handle. There are two T-nuts in the top of this already. Probably hard for you to see. But there's there's two T-nuts in the top of this already, but then the spool holder has uh, T-nuts on, on it. So there's a handle to put on the top, I think. Yeah, handle. Confused the heck out of me. 
Learned a lot from watching your channel. Thank you. Awesome. Love to hear it. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it, everybody. Boom. All right. Uh, here I need a hex wrench. I have to get down through these holes. Here's the plot synopsis. Siri just gave me the plot synopsis to the movie Holes on my watch. Don't know what I said that triggered her, but here we are. What's first print going to be? Um, probably an SD card print. I usually like to see how the SD card prints turn out. Just uh, test this, because I've had SD card prints that turned out badly, and I think that reflects poorly on the manufacturer, and I think that's worth noting, or realizing. So, I'll leave it up to the chat what we do first. I'll leave it up to you, chat. Oh, hey, they put a... Okay, I like that. Here's a... Here's something I like. It's got a film and runout sensor, but it's got a bearing idler uh, at the entry. So when the filament comes down around here... Oh, it's actually a double bearing. So if it comes around here, it rolls, and it... Oh, so if you put the... the put it below or above you've got an idler bearing that's a good idea um that's a good idea so anyway i designed i actually designed my own version of that for the neptune 2 and it's on my thangs page uh but you have to print it it's a printable one so glad to see they in, they incorporated that screwdriver i'm using um electric screwdriver it's called ifu ifu uh innovative you know, innovate for us um, so it's in the description right now of the live stream. If you go into the description of the live stream, I have a link to this because people always ask about it. So I put it in there. It's a uh, $30 for that and a little bit set, like a 40 piece bit set that comes with it. The bit set is missing 2.5, I think, which annoys me because that's so common on 3d printers, but I have bit sets for the bit sets. So yeah. Uh, what do you think of the new Voron tap mod over clicky? I started looking at the tap mod and it's way too overcomplicated and I don't get it. Like, I don't see how it's an upgrade over clicky or uh, I'm not going to be putting it on my 2.4, I can tell you that. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I like to see that they're innovating and trying different things, but I don't, I don't see it. Uh, does it have the same or similar printable tool holder? It should. I think that the, their tool holder just goes on top, doesn't it? I don't know. I have never printed it. All right. I think we're ready to fire this thing up. So what color filament do you think we should go with for our first print? Oh, tech tip for you. Here's a tech tip uh, from somebody who used to work on cars and now works on 3D printers. Save these bags. Save these bags. I have a whole bin full of these bags. Um, yeah, so. Uh, what's your take on non-bedslinger non Cartesian machines? What do you mean, like the Ender 5 Pro and such, and plus? They're fine. They, taking the moving bed slinger portion out of things can improve quality, uh, but they usually have some trade-offs, so. Do you think Polylite PETG is good from Polymaker? I have never tried their PETG. I've not tried any Polymaker PETG. Um, I use Greengate 3D for PETG. That's what that whole shelf over there is, is Greengate 3D. Um, but I don't print with PETG much anymore. I use Polymaker Polylite and Polyterra uh, PLA, Polylite ASA, their nylon, their poly... I use everything from Polymaker except their PETG, and everything I have used from Polymaker has been great, so I assume it's good, but I can't say for sure. Cool. Um, yeah. 
Transparent blue. The only transparent blue I have is PETG, and I would prefer not to clog this thing right off the bat. We had purple, we got blue. Let me get a power cord plugged in here. I have forget to even check if printers come with power cords anymore because I always have one here on my bench. Teal Polyterra. I usually have Teal Polyterra. Do I right now? That's ASA. Uh, I don't know if I have any right now. Blue. Do you check the voltage? Good call. Good thing you said something, because it's on 230. 115, there we go. Good call, thank you. Nope, it's not auto, auto voltage. There's a switch. Yeah. Right there. Switch. I had to switch it. And on it goes. Polyterra Red. Let me see what we got for filaments here. Oh, I forgot I did this. Hold on a second. I forgot I did this. Just before the stream, I finally set up this camera angle. Boom. The iPhone angle. Sorry if it's a little shaky, folks, but... Here is the touchscreen interface on the Neptune 3. And there's the camera I was watching you folks with, or talking to you with. So, I hate that I can't see the screen right now, but let's, oh, I gotta put an SD card in. There's no SD card right now. There's the telephone co cord. I guess somebody had to find some use for telephone cords now that nobody has landlines. I don't know that I care about being able to take this off of here, but I can. I can see if you had a farm of these, like Uncle Jesse, taking that off and mounting that to the shelf or something. I don't know. I have to switch camera angles back here and find the SD card. Found it. Now I'm getting dizzy. Yeah. That's not great for lives. But I wanted to be able to have like some way of just quickly showing you things. So, All right, SD card in. Let's find out what print options we have. Or what prints are loaded up free uh, already? And we got somebody spouting off. So, report. Hmm. On the uh, let's just go with spam. Okay. For what purpose is the socket on the back of the power supply? The, hold on. Do you mean, ah. I'm out of OBS, sorry. Um, do you mean this? It's not a socket, that's the switch for the power. That's the switch for the power. <clears throat> so you can switch it for um, European or US voltages. SD cards in, so show how the uh, interface shows. We'll do. There's also a plug. Oh, there is. You're right. There's a. You're right. There's a socket back there for 24 volts. That must be how in the pro they add on the light kit. Good call. Didn't know that. No. What they're talking about. Let's not hit the microphone. Is right there. There is a, a 24 volt socket. Yep. There's a 24 volt socket right there. Little barrel plug. So that's cool. All right. Let me 
I'm gonna switch to the iPhone again, so sorry folks if it gets a little shaky. I am a shaky person. All right, so print. We've got the Ender 3 Buddha. The, well, that looks like what we got. Well, shit. <laughs> well, the only preloaded file is their, uh, their Buddha file, the Neptune 3. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry for coughing. Um, yeah. Oh geez, more bots. Superman's in here telling us about Jesus. <laughs> Too much Red Bull, we can see all the wings. I drink Monster, but yeah. It doesn't matter, caffeine or none, I shake. I'm just a shaky person. That's why I had to be really supportive when I was welding. I always, put, I was always a pinky out welder. Pinky out, hold the torch, drag along. Uh, yeah, well, you know what we're printing. So what color do we want to do? We had blue, red, teal. Uh, let me grab some colors quick. All right, here's the colors I got. We got uh, shaky equals demons. Yeah, great. Um, muted purple. <laughs> I do speak with a forked tongue, so. <laughs> uh, blue and, oh, this is watermelon. And watermelon red. Watermelon red, polylight matte blue, or um, muted purple. Muted purple. I like the muted purple color. Muted purple. We got blue, muted purple. I'm going to let you folks have another second or two to decide what you want. I'm going to start heating the bed up uh, and then I'm going to level it and then we'll go from there. Ooh, I like this. Let me switch cameras real quick. I'll show you the interface. I do like what I'm seeing at the moment. I want to preheat the bed. So I select the uh, hot end. Let's go 215. And it's heating. Bed, 65. Heating. I like that. I do like that. We got preset for ABS and PLA. Shouldn't have ABS on this machine. It's not an all metal hot end. So, extruder controls, I can extrude, I can move. Okay, I'm liking this touchscreen. That is a vast improvement over their last touchscreen interface. I like that. I'm not a big fan of the MakerBase interface, so I like that. All right, let's go with purple here. Looks like we got enough purple votes there. We are going with muted purple. <clears throat> I like that what I really like is that number pad because the Neptune 2 didn't have that so when you wanted to heat it up you had to just mash the button up 10 degrees or whatever at a time until you got to 200 or whatever it was really annoying so you're hitting it you know 20 times that's annoying actually having a number pad great we got more bad more bots in here lovely Report. Why didn't that work? There we go, that worked. Yeah, Polyterra's 1999. On Black Friday, it was 15.99 a spool. I wanted to stock up, but I also have an entire shelf full of it. So uh, there's also a Polymaker affiliate account in the description down below, a link that 
costs you exactly the same amount. They ship it from Amazon if you order off of their website. So like you get it fast and it helps support me through their Polymaker affiliate account. So reported to, thank you. All right. Oh wait, I don't have to bed level. I was preparing to bed level this thing, but it's auto leveling. I don't have to. I have to adjust the offset I would assume. Yeah, let's set it up to a, an auto level. Let it go through an auto level run. And then, uh... And we'll go from there. This is a 3D printing stream, so anybody talking about Jesus is just doing it to be their own thing. I have zero problem with religion, just doesn't really have any place in discussion happening right now. And Connie Fitzgerald is still here, so after a couple of reports, you are getting removed. Bye bye I am not part of the Polymaker Discord. Um, no, not part of the Polymaker Discord. I'm not a big fan of Discord personally. Not really my thing. Yeah. Yeah. I use it all the time for various purposes, but I don't love that way I have to. I did my time in the chat rooms, you know? And we got the next one. Is this like an Ender 3 Pro with improvements? Yeah, I mean, realistically, yes. I'm gonna switch camera angles here. Going through the bed leveling right now. Uh, silent board I was talking about. Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3. Let me grab it real quick. I'm gonna grab a, a link, drop it in the chat. Load. I need a new computer in the studio. Really need a new computer. Ooh, I went up in price a bit. I'm gonna put the, the V2 in there because it's cheaper. I run the V2 in my Ender 3, my main Ender 3. Anytime now. This is very slow to do a self leveling, I'll tell you that. Is it just repeating? I can't tell. Alright. Paste. And Clark Kent. I just banned Superman. That's impressive. Uh, do I have any experience with the Pico board? Yes, I run the Pico in my um, my main Voron V0. I run the Pico in that. Seems like a very strange pattern that it's doing here. It's like random. Yeah, it's doing like five or six taps. It's also just so ungodly slow.
So I've got the ability to adjust. I don't know. It seems like it's stuck in a leveling loop here. Um, the Pico is limited to <clears throat> 0.8 amps, I think, on motors. Um, so you definitely can't run very big motors off of it. Yeah, I don't know if it's doing what it should be doing. And it seems like I'm stuck in this little loop here. And I can't back out. It seems like it stopped. But I am stuck here. That's weird. All right. Checking their website quick, see if there is a firmware update that I can do or what. Maybe we'll be updating the firmware on stream. Firmware software tutorials. Uh, I might as well screen share this with you folks. Hi, let's look. Neptune 3, where are your freaking files here? This is not helpful, Elegoo. Oh, firmwares, okay. Neptune 3, firmware. What do the notes say here, Nep Elegoo? Any time now. Uh, screen firmware update. Not too worried about that. Board firmware. Improved leveling method. Fixed bugs. Board firmware. We are on 15 days ago, there's a beta one. Three months ago, there's 1.104. Let's download this. Download. All right, back to stream here. Sorry, folks. That's being weird. Sorry, folks, couldn't read chat for the moment. Update the firmware, update the firmware. All right, let's switch this off, see what firmware ver version we are on, and we'll go with that. Opinion on putting linear rails on a printer. Uh, it's not necessary. You don't have to. They're nice to have. So, yep, we are one version behind on the firmware, so we're going to update it. We are one firmware version behind. Got this SD card reader. I only have like a thousand of them here. <clears throat> Linear rails are nice to haves, but they're really not necessary. Um, okay, I just downloaded the firmware. Double check what their notes said about board firmware. Looks like I am good. So I can go ahead and eject this, get it in here, and let's update the firmware. 
That is not a good start, Elego. I've never had a machine out of the box that I had to update the firmware to make it more usable. Yeah. So, that's a first. Don't get me wrong, I've had like problems that firmware fixed, but seems like we got a serious problem here. Okay. Size of the build plate on this, 235 by 235. I think it's taller than two, I think it might be taller than 250. Build volume, let's see, 37. Yeah, it's taller than 250 build volume. It's like 30 millimeters taller than the Ender 3. Uh, still interested in testing max extrusion speed. I've just got too many projects going on right now. Okay, let's see what setting what we're on now. All right, I'm on the 1.04 firmware. Oh, hey, they got the build volume on here. It's 280. Yep, 220 by 220 by 280. So 30 millimeters taller than an Ender 3. What other settings do we have in here? Temperature, default ABS temperature, leveling temperature. All right, that's it. Not a lot, but solid. Okay, let's just start the print. Let's load up some filament, get this thing printing, and hopefully it does. 215, I do like this keypad for dialing in temperature. Cool. Dialed in. Now the cord's already getting tangled on me. It is strain gauge leveling, yes. All right. Daryl, thank you for being here. Thanks for asking questions. Hope we were able to help you out. Let's get this thing printing. Come on. The, uh, the filament runout sensor is not any better than the one on the Neptune 2 because the filament's getting stuck because it's there's cavities inside of there. I got to try and get through. That's annoying. Come on. I'm gonna end up taking this, these, uh, this thing apart just to get filament through it for the first time. Yep, I have to. I can't get filament through it. I'm not a big fan of filament runout sensors, and I'm definitely not a fan of ones like this, so. I can't quite see daylight through it. I can, but I can't. I did bend it up slightly. I bent it up, down, spinning it around. It's not, uh, it's not one to go through here. Let me try and stick a freaking wrench through it. It's got a 45 on the tip. I can't put a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench through it. It won't fit. Something's wrong in here. All right, we're taking this fully apart. Eh. Got the sensor off of here. Now we gotta take it apart, because filament is not going through it. 
Like, this is a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench. Wait, no, that isn't. This is 1.5 millimeter hex wrench. Won't go through. Yeah, you know what? You're right. I'm gonna do that just to get this thing going. I'm gonna go into settings. Filament detector is off. Let's get this thing printing and I will disassemble this while it's printing. Maybe that's a filament sample in there. Maybe. Maybe. Not holding my tongue at the right angle. Yep, that's it. It does have a dual gear metal extruder included. That is a nice positive. This is a path interference type, something about it's catching. Which it means it's just a micro switch inside of here. But some reason it's catching, like it won't let filament through. Maybe it's bent, maybe there's a piece of something in there. This bit sucks. For this purpose it sucks. That's better. It's a JIS screw, not a regular Phillips. Our Z offset is too tight. Can I adjust that? No. Oh wait, no I can. It's down here at the bottom. Z offset. Let's go. It's not very responsive, but I can adjust it. All right, that looks better. Oh yeah, that's exactly what this is. It's a roller, oh wow, okay. This isn't uh, just a micro switch. It's like more like the uh, Big Tree Tech one. It won't save Z offset for the next print. Thank you. Good to know. At least it has baby Z adjustment like that, that or baby stepping. That's good. Yeah, it's just so restricted and tight. Um, let me show you. I'm going to move over and show you folks a closer view. So it's got a, oh, iPhone cam. I forgot I had the iPhone cam, jackass. Thank you. <laughs> Calling myself a jackass, by the way. Where'd I put the iPhone? Right here. So yeah, it's a Hall effect switch. So there's, a, there's the, the effector wheel, the reluctor wheel. Bearing idler with a spring load on it. You can see just how shaky I am, and let's get off of this one. Boop. Do you do driveways and paths, young man? I need a quote. No, I don't. I'm a 3D printing and car builder. Is that a quote from something? I don't know. Okay, so why won't filament go through this? Why won't filament go through this? 
It's just that tight. You have to really cram it. Yeah, you have to really cram it. That's all. It's just like a big detent. Weird. Maybe you saw my hand. Okay. Hey, if y'all can get business through my live stream, go for it. Hello. God, I am really shaky today. All right, so the reason that the filament wouldn't go through this is because I wasn't pushing hard enough. I need to spit on it a little bit or something. I can show you the uh, filament guide a little better. This is whole base plate that bolts underneath of it. All right, back on this goes. Well, wait, it'll go on after this is done. <laughs> Can't put it back on right now. Jackass. Yeah. <laughs> cram it. I mean, that's what you gotta do. Just cram it back in there. Ram it. I'm going to move the second camera angle so you folks can get a better close-up view of this. Right back. solid speed set up off the start. I mean, that looks like it's probably printing, what, 50, 60 millimeters a second? They were pretty aggressive with their slice on this one. What's our print time estimate? We're at 3%. Crank up the speed. Yeah, let's do that. Can we? Speed, yes. Alright, I bumped up the nozzle temp to 214, and I bumped up the speed 125%. Do you need an enclosure to print Polymaker ASA? Uh, ASA? Need? No. Is it best? Yes. Um, so you don't need it, but it will make your life a whole lot better. Uh, yeah. I personally have printed a lot of open air ASA uh, on open air machines like my Prusa and my Ender 3, but I usually run a space heater nearby. Need a magnetic mount for the screen. I agree. This is too, it's a little too difficult to slide on and off. I don't love that. It works. It's working. I would like more. This still feels slow. I feel like we can push this harder. Let's go faster. We're at 150% speed now. Do I still use the reanimator? I have not been, but that's not because there's anything wrong with the machine or whatever. You always want more. I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, I am not running any IDEX at all, uh, Chris. 
Not making, uh, not running any IDEX, or CD make stuff, sorry. Um, I'm not running any IDEXs at all, personally, and definitely never done so with Clipper. Uh, Reanimaker. The only reason I'm not using Reanimaker, uh, I like that machine more than I thought I would. The only reason I haven't been using it is I want to replace the motors and replace that carriage assembly that I showed in the, mo in the, uh, um, in the video. That how it's wobbly. I have the replacement printed, ready to go. I just got to install it. I just haven't had time. Uh, there's just not enough hours in the day. So, yeah, Reanimaker's right over there on the shelf. Uh, I like that printer. I want to keep playing with it, but I just need to find some time. You just want me to show my feet on stream, don't you? You don't get that for free. Join Patreon. Ugh. Well, it's printing. It's at 150% speed right now. And it's going all right, it looks like. It's doing all right. It's doing all right. Just had to do a uh, firmware update before we got going. That's a little weird. Frankenforge. That's awesome. I like that name. I like that name. A Crocs guy, yeah, sure. All right. Should be able to get away with pushing it to 200%. Why don't we try? Let's have some fun with it. Let's see what we can do. Uh, somebody wanted me to show the UI here while it's printing. Let me switch to the handheld cam and we'll go. Alright, handheld cam. Here is the interface. Speed. 150 currently. I wonder... Now I can't... I can't get a number pad here. And I... It's we. I don't know. It's weird to me. Let's go 175. Filament, we're at 214 now. I'm going to bump it up a couple degrees. Give it a better chance to flow. And there we go. We'll see. Anybody want to do the math and where we're at there? If it's sliced at 50 millimeters a second... Plus on the left. Okay, I'm. A, I was about to say that. That felt weird to me. I wanted the plus to be on the right. I'm glad you're not. I'm not alone in that. I kept going, like trying to reach to the right where the minus is to to increase the speed. I wasn't sure if it was just me being weird or what. All right, still doing it. Uh, good enclosures out there. I honestly don't have any recommendations. I haven't used any of them. I build enclosed machines when I need enclosures. <laughs> uh, the best enclosure is a machine that's designed to be enclosed. Sorry, but I don't really have better than that for you. I missed that. Hello from France. Hi, welcome to the stream. Well, we're at, we're actually at one, 175 now, percent. So if it's actually 50, yeah, 87 and a half, so 87 millimeters a second. Hello from Denmark, hello. Welcome from Eastern United States. 
extruded polystyrene. There's also the lac enclosure setup. Those always look really nice overall. Uh, you can build a lac enclosure with those cheap IKEA tables. So. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about this thing so far. I think I might be more impressed with it than I expected to be. It's <laughs> nothing. Speed it up, you Philly scaredy cats. Did I see that uh, Cookie Cat is now at Micro Center? Yes, I did. I love the folks from Cookie Cat. They're great people. Um, at least in my limited experience. Uh, I haven't gotten to my Micro Center lately. I want to see if it's at my Micro Center. If it is, I'll make a, a TikTok video about it, probably. Where am I at here? Is it fast? I mean, I've cranked the speed up a bunch. I wouldn't buy this expecting it to be a fast printer. Don't, I, I would not do that. You can push it, but. Usually end up at the one in Baltimore. I go to the one outside of Philadelphia here. We have one right outside the city. It's like 30 minutes ish, less with without traffic, but there's never no traffic, so. Uh, northeast, southeast, I'm in Fishtown, so north, east, technically. Very, 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 very south side of northeast, but yeah. I'm going to live it a little bit longer, and then we'll bump it to 200%. Why not? Been there when the wife wants to go to KOP. Good. Yeah, it's definitely not the nicest Micro Center by any means. It could really use a, a redo, an overhaul, but I it's I love shopping there. I love having it close. I'm in Georgia. Oh, oh, oh. I thought you meant Northeast Philly. Uh, yeah, no. Northeast United States. Philadelphia. With clipper and input shaping, I'm pushing 120. Cool. I was printing on my Ender. I put a clipper on my uh, original Ender 3 yesterday for the first time and printed out a pretty not that great, but all right, Benchy at uh, 150 on infill, 100 on external perimeter, and 125 on internal perimeter. Just bought one of these a few, uh, few weeks ago via Amazon. South Philly, welcome. Hello. Hi, South Philly. Home in the house. Don't be jealous. It wasn't that great. <clears throat> uh, I can't find the Benchy. Oh, there it is. There's the Benchy I printed yesterday on, on that Ender 3. Had some bow cooling issues, but overall, it printed out pretty good. So, and a fun one I'll tell you folks since you're here on the stream uh, I'll give you folks a little uh, I'm, not, I'm not making a YouTube video about this I actually made a uh, a TikTok video about it, and uh, it'll be on Instagram too. But I clipperized my Ender 3 with this uh, old netbook. I haven't tested Neptune 3 Pro, nope. So, this HP crappy netbook from 2007 that wasn't any good when it came out, I installed Debian Linux on it yesterday and Clipper, and I ran my Ender 3 off of this. I did that for a, I did that for a sponsor video with iFixit. Uh, what's new about the Neptune 3? Neptune 3 has the new touchscreen interface here with the like movable touchscreen. Comes with the PEI bed. Comes with the metal extruder. Has strain gauge, auto bed leveling with the nozzle probing, 
And that's pretty much what's new versus... Oh, and it's a little taller than the Neptune 2. Pushing 300 millimeters a second on a bed slinger? That's impressive. I don't even print that fast on my Vorons on an average basis. How does nozzle probing work? Um, it's got a strain gauge up at the top of the hot end. So when the nozzle touches the bed, it like bends the hot end up a little bit and tells the probe that it has probed. So it uses that for auto bed leveling. There is no manual adjustment on this at all. No manual bed leveling. Just did, just did the same thing with the Chromebook. I thought about doing a Chromebook. I have one floating around from that Chromebook video I did. Um, but I feel like it's way more interesting to use a 2007 netbook. And honestly, it runs it well. Um, it runs it really well. I was amazed. When, it, when the printer was running, I was using like 5% of the CPU. I thought it was gonna load that thing a lot more than it did. The worst part about it was installing Clipper. Uh, not difficulty wise, that was fine, but it took like hours to install Clipper. It was so weird how long it took. But I got it done. Now I just need to get approval from iFixit to actually post the video. Uh, no, a netbook would not be far more powerful than a. a, a uh... You'd be surprised. <laughs> You'd be surprised how how not really. This is not all metal. It's Teflon lined. Let me pull up. I'm pulling up the specs. I don't remember the specs of a Raspberry Pi offhand. Pulling them up, come on. <sighs> What's the processor specs? Yeah, 1.5 gigahertz. Okay. So the Pi, why did I do that? Oh, pull the chat back up here, sorry. Yeah, the, the Pi 4 is actually surprisingly powerful. Where did I put? I have a Pi 4 here somewhere. Well, this netbook, the netbook that I used here, has an Atom N720 single core processor which is uh, 1.6 gigahertz. 1.6 gigahertz uh, Intel processor, single core, single thread, and two gigabytes of RAM. I upgraded it, it was one gigabyte. I upgraded it and I converted it to an SSD. Long time no live. Hey Nick, welcome to it. Um, yeah, I upgraded this to two gigabytes of RAM. So the Pi that I compared it to, I didn't compare, but a Raspberry Pi 4, I've got one here somewhere, I don't know where. Raspberry Pi 4 has a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz ARM processor, and the one that I have here has two gigabytes of RAM. So, three more cores, point, yeah, 100 megahertz slower clock speed versus that. Yeah. But it, it runs the printer fine. It doesn't surf the web fine. Uh, um, this... I, I tried using this a little bit yesterday on Linux and just like surfing the web. It is so painful. And the fun fact about it is it was painful back when this came out. I, I, I have this since new and it had Windows XP on it when I got it. And it was it was a painful experience back then. <clears throat> I put Linux on it like as soon as I got it and used it. 
I used that thing on my travel computer back in the day. And T's not hitting my throat right. Not hitting the spot. Have I seen the Neptune 3 Pro? I've seen it, don't have one, never used one, so. I got a, that Chromebook that I did the video with, I think I paid $70 for that. Uh, I did a whole video where I 3D printed with a Chromebook a little while back. Screen cable looks funny, yeah it does. It's literally a phone cord. Maybe not electrically, but it is form factory. All right, let's bump this up to 200% speed. We're up into the main body now, why not? John, thank you for being here. Have yourself a good one. We're going 200% right now, let's go for it. Boom, 200%. Like that smash button. Yep. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Um, Nick, I'm not sure what you're asking. How my lab's printing over some time? What do you mean? Oh, Daniel Craw back there said something about you can't compare just based off megahertz instructions changed a lot. You are totally right. That netbook, um, that netbook back there is only a 32-bit processor. Uh, it cannot run 64-bit processes. Um, so I had to install a 32-bit branch of Debian Linux on it, which was kind of annoying just to find. Um, like, it, it, there's a, so much more that goes into it than just the speed of the processor or whatever, but yeah. Watching a 3D print build feels like watching paint dry. You are not wrong. People love it on TikTok, but yeah. Oh, the Bamboo Lab, uh, the X1. Um, I'm kind of iffy on it. There's no passion in it for me. I don't love it. I just don't really like love the machine. Uh, it prints really, I think the print quality off the X1 could be improved. I think it could be better. But every time I show my partner, uh, my fiance, a, a print off of the X1, she always raves about them. She's like, oh, that's so good. That looks so good. And I'm always like, really? I don't think it does. But she sees it. So it's like, okay. Um, so that tells me that for the average person, they would be blown away by the X1. And I have to remember that, you know? It's hard to disconnect and remember that sometimes, that what I would be happy with is not what the average person would probably be happy with. So... But for multicolor, for multicolor printing, it is absolutely the best multicolor experience I've had. We're at 38%. And 200% is doing it just fine. So you know what? I'm pushing it up. Your video might inspire me to dig out a netbook. Hey, I mean, it's... I felt bad throwing that thing away. So... We're at 250% now. I want to bump the temp up a, a degree. It's a machine for someone who just wants to do prints, not tinker and play around with. That's fair. That's fair. And accurate. I still think it needs improvement in that front. Um, I don't think it's perfect in that, that regard, but half gallon of Yahoo? It's Wawa iced tea. Uh, most of the time, the quieter the printer, the better the quality. Fair. Uh, I, I print my X1, I print 50% of default speed. Always. 
I don't print it that fast. I don't run it that fast because I wasn't happy with the quality I was getting at full speed. I think Bamboo really, really needs to tune quality presets. They need to stop with the speed. They've got the speed. Great. Tune some quality presets. Let me decide if I just want this print done fast or I want it done still fast, but clean. So what do I think about Delta style printers for a beginner? I think they are complicated if something goes wrong, but otherwise rad machines. So I don't really have a good answer on that. I don't have any Deltas right now. I'm waiting on the um, V400. What's that? What's that company called? Makes the Deltas? I'm blanking. They're supposed to be sending me one, so. I print, uh, so you print at ludicrous speed on the, uh, on the X1, yeah. FL Sun, thank you. FL Sun. I'm waiting on one of theirs. It's supposed to be coming in. <laughs> everybody knows, everybody remembers it. I don't. And I have one on the way. <laughs> Supposedly. I haven't gotten a tracking number on that yet, actually. But anyway. For a better finish on the X1, turn down the outer to outer wall and top to 50. I usually do like 60, 75, but yeah. Got one with good support on the, uh, on chat phone for beginner. Uh, get one with good support. Yeah, that's hard to do, but yeah. Any wedding updates? Nope. We decided we're going to Iceland for our honeymoon. She came up with that, actually. She doesn't even like the cold, but she... She came up with going to Iceland, and I'm like, I've always wanted to go, so I'm down with that. Zoom in on the print. Boop. Um, and so, yeah, no, we haven't decided. I think we're thinking next fall, but we really, it's on our calendar to sit down and talk about it, but we're both so busy that we really haven't, uh, haven't come up with anything. We had 250% speed and it's still going fine. Uh, go in July. She wants to see the Northern Lights. That's the problem. And Northern Lights is winter, uh, fall. Am I ever going to decide, am I ever going to design my own 3D printer? I've been thinking about that lately. I mean, arguably I kind of did with MakerBot. Obviously I, mo I only modified an existing design very heavily, but, um, I've been thinking about it, and I am 100% certain that I will eventually design my own machine from scratch. No idea when, where, what. Can I see any defects? Not really yet, but I'm not, it's, I, I can't really get in there and get a good view of it while it's printing. I can see some gaps for uh, retraction, retraction gaps probably over retracting a little bit now that it's so fast but that's a guess I have no idea now we're into heavy overhang so hi stream it's doing the overhang pretty damn well oh I forgot I forgot that this has dual Part cooling fans. I forgot about that. I was still thinking it only had the one. I was really impressed by the cooling since with one, but it's got dual fans. Uh, does it have retraction settings on here? I don't think so. Settings, speed, flow, fan. Nope. I have Z offset. I have speed. I have flow rate of the nozzle. I have fan speed and I've got filament speed set, or, uh, temperature settings and that's it. No retraction setting and that would only work if it was sliced with firmware retraction anyway. There's a new Kitty Tech or Kitty Tech. I've never worked with one of the Kitty Techs so 300 then. Let's give it a second but we might. 
Uh, have I seen the new copper, no, or the new uh, spider? No, I, I haven't really taken a look at it. I heard there was a new one, but I haven't really looked. Haven't really looked. All right. Let's let it get past the overhang that it's on right now, and we'll bump it up harder. Am I going to do regular streams? There was a point where I really made a goal of doing one stream a month at least. And I've got a handful of printers I've got to get unboxed. So I'm probably going to be doing more streams in the near future. Uh, but I don't know how long it's going to last. So we'll see. Uh, can I show the Arctic Teal? Do you like the Ender 5? I don't like the Ender 5 Plus so much. I think it's outdated. Uh, I got an Ender 5 S1, the new one here. Haven't had a chance to uh, take a look at it yet, so. It looks like a nice printer, but does the pr world need another printer in this form factor? That's fair. It's still the most popular form factor of printer being sold, is what it comes down to. Uh, you got one of the S1s. Cool, Nick. Let me know what you think about it. I'm not going to have a chance to get to it yet. I knew Akuma, uh, Matt, was having trouble with his. Let me look for that filament real quick. Ah, there it is. That is the Polyterra Arctic Teal. I really like this filament. I like this color. I don't think I have anything printed in it here. Let me look real quick. The only thing I have printed with the Arctic Teal. Bloop. The only thing I have printed with the Arctic Teal right now is the TikTok logo. Um, that is the Arctic Teal, and that's Polyterra's uh, army red, and then they're black. So, but that's the Arctic Teal. I really like that color personally. So, it's one of my favorites from Polymaker personally. Just printed the uh, Ender 5 Plus in that color. Also, um, uh, the trash can. Was that my trash can you used, Nick? Yeah, you know, I wasn't sure what to think about this printer, uh, but I'm liking it more than I thought I would already. So I might have to, uh, I might have to do a review of this. I was kind of just going to unbox it and leave it at that and probably do like a TikTok review, but we'll see. Polymaker could write the color bigger on the box. Yes, they could. The very first thing I do when I unbox Polymaker filament is I sharpie the name of the color bigger on the box. <laughs> like. Army blue. Yeah. I, I first thing I do when I unbox Polymaker filament, I write the, the color on the outside of the box. Because, yes, it is too small on there. Uh, what type of car content did I used to do? Check out Hot Rod Hippie. H-O-T-R-O-D-H-I-P-P-I-E. That's my other channel. Um, I would do metal shaping, tool reviews, fabrication how-tos, um, SEMA coverage videos. Send me a picture on, on uh, Instagram. Cool. Um, yeah, so I did a lot of everything. Um, I did, I actually got into 3D printing because of cars. I was a custom car builder. I wanted to 3D print parts for the cars that I was building and prototype parts for machining and everything. And then 3D printing took over my life. And then 3D printing content actually became popular for me. And I had like, I have 40,000 subscribers on my car channel, Hot Rod Hippie, but it didn't pay. It costs me money to make that content because you know if I want to if I want to make a video I have to build a car I have to do a welding project the supplies would outweigh how much I would make off of the video I couldn't afford to keep doing it addiction to 3D printing absolutely uh, and then 3D printing came along and 
It's cheaper for me to make content. I enjoy it. I don't want to say I enjoy it more, but there's more satisfaction in it that I can get a project done faster. Building a car the way that I build cars to the level that I build them takes years. And I just don't have the time for that. So I enjoy making printing content more and it pays the bills. So, but I mostly worked on street rods, muscle cars, uh, hot rod stuff. So yeah. You know, there's plenty of sponsorship on both sides, but uh, on both sides of the spectrum of this, but I've had better luck with 3D printing content personally. Maybe it's just me and what I've put into it. I don't know. What do I do with my scraps? I've got bins in the basement I have no idea what to do with. I've been saving them to find somebody to recycle them, and I've not found a service that I really felt was good or whatever, so. I've got whole buckets full of failed prints and scraps and bits and support. <clears throat> Ugh. All right, let's bump to 250. Let's, oh, we're already at 250. Let's go to 300. Screw it. I bumped one more degree. Do some reviews on filament recyclers. That's not a terrible idea. Really like to watch a car 3D printing channel. Um, I'm going to have some car stuff on here and on probably Hot Rod Hippie in the near future. I've got a full instrument gauge cluster for my dad's 65 GMC that I'm building for him. Uh, that I need to build, that I need to 3D print with. Uh, at Form Next, there was a company that doesn't solve the problem for you. Yeah, sadly. Yeah, I should look out for some uh, filament recycling companies and see about getting re reviewing their service and or... I always wanted to have like a home equipment set up for doing it, but it's just... Did you start at 100%? Yep. We are at 300% speed now. So what, 300%? We're at 150 millimeters a second? I'm amazed it's not skipping. It's under extruding in the infill, absolutely. A uh, little hard to, little hard to show you. I don't even think the iPhone will pick it up at this second, but the infill is under extruding. Let me see if I can show you. It's really hard to see, but it is under extruded in the infill. But honestly, the overall exterior quality is like, I'm not seeing issues. Do you think Prusa needs to update the Mark 3S? Yes, I do. Uh, that is hair texture. That was hair texture you're seeing. I mean, it's not a screw up. They really need to make a Mark 4. They really need to update and make a Mark 4. I just sold my Mark 3 like uh, two, three weeks ago. Um, I got rid of it. They need, yeah. They really should should have gone 32-bit by now, in my opinion. There should be a 32-bit Mark IV uh, mainboard like upgrade. I, I don't know. Recycling at home sadly isn't financially feasible when you can get good filament for twelve to fourteen dollars per kilo and then see the energy costs. Totally valid. Totally valid. They need 2209s. I don't think they're going to do 2209s. Um, they want stall guard. They want, which you can't do with uh, stealth chop. You have to be in spread cycle to use stealth, uh, stall guard. Because the, the Mark III has co uh, collision detection. And that requires using 
because they already have quiet stepper drivers in the Mark III S Plus, but it can't do collision detection then. I don't know. Uh, Core XY is popular now, but Cartesian still has its advantages. Yeah, I mean, plenty of people swear by Cartesian. I know, like, Insanity Automation swears by Cartesian and, and doesn't like um, Core XY. I've talked to him about that. Um, I don't know. I'm, I have no problem with Cartesian machines. I'm just having fun with Core XYs lately. Simplicity, less belt stretch. Once your Core XY system starts to get pretty big or your belt wears in pretty heavy, you can have a lot of belt stretch, which can, which can lead to quality issues and you know control issues over like precise filament and yeah. Accuracy for engineering grade parts, yep. And I know for Insanity Automation, he makes a lot of stuff for the car industry, so he needs to be precise. So I understand that. I find for my work, Core XY still produces as accurate as I need, personally. But Seventy-seven percent. We're still going fine. I kind of want to make this thing fail now. What do you think? Should I? Uh, Ender turn it into Core X Y. Well, it's a bed slinger, so it would have to be Core X Z. Um, look into the Voron switch wire. That's basically what it is. Maybe three fifty. We're at three hundred percent now, so let's screw it. Let's go three fifty. That should be about. I'm going to go 325. Nah, screw it. We're going 350. I am bumping a temperature a little, though. Three hundred and fifty percent. If we're now we're we're judging this based off of thinking that it's a 50 millimeter per second base speed print uh, perimeter speed times 3.5. Yeah, 175. 175 millimeters per second, maybe. Uh, depending on acceleration. Very good point. Depending on acceleration, yes. And I'm sure acceleration is not that high. Is direct drive better for speed? Mmm. No. Arguably, no, because it adds more weight to your carriage. Bowden is lighter, which is better for speed. Um, but the ability to control accurately and quickly and easily your extrusion rate and retractions and all of that balances it out. So, yes and no. Get better hot end for speed, yeah. Bottle gonna fall, which one? Bowden doesn't do faster tracks, you're right. So that is, that's a factor. Absolutely. I mean, we're still going. I'm gonna pause this real quick. I wanna show you folks the under extrusion of a tea bottle. Yeah, my desk is a mess. All right, I'm going to show you the under extrusion in the infill real quick. Bloop. Focus. See it there? Yeah, so infill, pretty under extruded. It's definitely not keeping up there. But otherwise, I can't get a good image of this. It's too close. But anyway, otherwise, we're looking all right. Let's see how it resumes from that. What do I think about the Pi 4B 
Uh, CB1 replacing Raspberry Pi for Clipper. It's really not that bad. Like, I expected worse. I expected this to have failed by now, so. Um, the CB1, I haven't used one personally yet, but what I'm seeing is branch issues, where you have to use, like, certain repositories and certain branches, and then people update Clipper, and then it doesn't work because the latest update of Clipper wasn't compatible, and, like, the problem is that the Raspberry Pi is the most supported system, and if you're not directly emulating what it does, it's things are gonna break eventually and or immediately. So Yeah, we could be upwards of a 180 on the infill, but we're under extruding on the infill, so. Uh, I think we're under extruding on the perimeter now, too. I don't know. I'm going to let it go. I mean, for what it is, I'm kind of amazed. So. I'm kind of amazed we're still going. We're at 86%. Definitely going to be doing some speed tests with my Neptune 3. I'm going to have to play with this more. I'm going to have to actually play around with pushing this thing more and see what we can do. Like, reliably and repeatedly. But I'm curious now. I like the dual part cooling fan. I think I might like this machine better than I thought I was going to. I really didn't expect to like it. Uh, the CB1 uses a closed source all winner chip. Um, uh, the support, uh, yeah. So, and the support drops from time to time. See, that's the problem. Is is we know the Pi is reverse compatible and is going to be, continue to be supported for quite a while. I just can't bring myself to do it. What acceleration doesn't have stock? No idea. No idea. It's probably like 500 at the most. Uh, do you think big brands going to adopt the Revo system? What do you mean big brands? Like which ones? Um, I don't know. I kind of wish that I kind of wish that Prusa had gone that way with the XL. I like the Revos. I really like the Revos. I'm gonna be doing a new machine build with the Revo soon. Uh, so yeah, see where it dies, 400%. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Let's give it a shot. We are also. That is a fair point. We're also to a very small portion of this print, so we're probably maxed out by... by um, we're probably limited by acceleration now. We have 400%. Is it actually at 400%? Who knows? But... I think we probably are limited by acceleration at this point. It's just too short and too small of an area to, to accelerate enough. Minimum layer time won't have anything to do with it here because the minimum layer time has to do with slicing. The issue is because we're in a really small circle now, if the acceleration isn't high enough, it won't be able to accelerate to the speed quickly enough. Does that make sense? It's like a drag race. You have to think about a drag race. When we're in a smaller section of the print, our racetrack just got shorter. So reaching our top speed, if we have a mile, we can do it. If we have a quarter mile, we might not be able to do it. So Max Excel in the firmware is 3000. Yeah, but is it sliced that way? That's the Excel limit. I, this isn't 3,000. I can tell you for a fact this is not 3,000 acceleration. I was running 3,000 on my Ender 3 yesterday. It looks substantially meaner than this. Um, 
Uh, I, it was probably sliced at a lower setting. What do you think about the brand Rat Rig? They make really neat stuff. I don't like that you have to buy some stuff from them. Um, I think you can buy some of the stuff from other places, but like, there are parts you have to buy. I like an Avoron, you can just buy off the shelf hardware and print your own parts kind of thing, so. Yep, we're printing the Buddha because it was the only thing on the SD card. Kind of surprised by that. But. Yeah. It's doing it. Let me uh, play around here real quick. We might slice a Benchy up and try it out a little bit. I don't know. Benchy. I want to play around a little with this thing now. Let's just push it. I'm going to be flow rate limited on this, I think, but... So close, so close, so close. Could be low jerk and corner, great call. Spinning Moon 3D with the 20 bucks super chat. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Maybe I'll order some lunch, thank you. Thank you very much. What do you think about Linux? Okay, I need to tell you all a story about why I'm marrying the woman I'm marrying. Yesterday, I was working on a Linux install on that netbook, and uh, when I was all said and done, I forget what I was saying. Oh, it was t it took a long time to install Clipper and whatever, and she was asking, oh, well, couldn't you have, like, put the drive into another computer and installed it via that computer? And I was like, yeah, I could have, but I don't have another Linux box to do that with. And her response was, well, why don't you build yourself another computer and have a Linux box so you have something with each system so you're like set up for every eventuality. And it was just like, this is why I'm marrying you. Like, you know, she not only is she so supportive of what I do, but she's like, build yourself another computer. Yeah, you should do that. You, you can justify that. Like, <laughs> thank you, babe. Thank you. And we're done. So there is our eh, so crammed to the bed. Boop. I'm gonna take a closer look at it real quick before I show you folks. Woo! There's a defined line where I paused it. There's definitely a line where I paused it. There's definitely ghosting. But honestly, if you handed me this and told me that this was printed at 400% speed. I wouldn't have thought so. Saves time in the future, so you have more time with her. You know, you're not wrong. 
Do not I'll marry her if you don't. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move the camera. I'm gonna move over real quick. Right, you know what? I'll use the iPhone to get an image of this. So let's take a look at the finished product. All right. Yeah, like there's some under extrusion right there on that cheek. Clipper can work on an 8-bit board because the 8-bit board isn't doing the processing. That line right there, that is where I paused and resumed the print. Um, that's where I paused and resumed the print. There's under extrusion here on the cheeks. And there's retraction issues, like little blob points where there's over retraction. But honestly, This turned out really pretty good for cranking the speed up as much as we did. I'm impressed. Focus. Ah! Don't knock the Buddha over. A little overly stuck to the bed because the Z offset was a little tight. Main job. My joke got more laughs. Okay. Now, I want to check the settings, see if I can adjust the Z offset. I don't see where I do. That's annoying. Is there not a way to set the Z offset? Uh, have I done a video about the differences between Marlin and Clipper? I have not. Um, I don't know that I'm the best person to cover it, but I'll think about it. I'll think about doing it. It's the way that the, the instructions are handled are different. It can process faster in Clipper because of the way that it handles it, but it has to leverage higher power computers to do that. Single board computers and such. You have to do the whole leveling process to set Z offset. Okay, let's see if it uh, actually do the level this time. And I'm gonna slice a Benchy in the meantime with some high acceleration speeds and let's see what happens. While that's leveling, I'm gonna slice a Benchy. Uh, layer times. Ba 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 cooling. Just slicing up a Benji to go faster, see what we can achieve out of this thing. It's just being ridiculous, like this is silly. But why not? Let's be silly. I should use Super Slicer for this, but whatever. Why is that so slow? Probably volumetric speed. Uh, I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna show you folks what I'm slicing here. Screen share. Bloop. All right. Benchy, 
saying an hour 15, which feels really long. Let's see what the speed is. 128, nine, like, I don't see where the, the hiccup is. It seems inaccurate. A lot of infill, no surprise there. I'll drop the infill percentage. I'm going to slice this up while this is leveling. I don't know. Do you need Super Slicer for Clipper? Nope. I, I run Prusa Slicer most of the time with Clipper. Firmware max of 3000 Excel will limit you. I'm, I, I'm not at that much. I sliced it at like 2000. Uh, I put it to 2000 Excel, which I still think is aggressive for this, and I, I doubt it'll be very happy, but we'll find out. For your sanity, don't leave this window because it won't. Okay, good to know. What slicer do I think is the best? That's a good question. Hard to say. I'm still going to say Prusa Slicer. There are things I want to see change about it that are supposedly coming in the next update. But personally, I prefer Prusa Slicer. There are a few things it does that are just dumb. It need to fix a couple of things. But overall, the quality that I get out of it, the speed I can print with it, the adjustability and the, the configurability of it, I like Prusa Slicer best. Super Slicer is better in some ways, but it's overly complicated, like way overly complicated for the average user. Um, yeah, for me, it's it's overcomplicated. It's annoying. You're using Prusa Slicer? Absolutely. What does it need to change? Prusa Slicer? Um, I can show you what it needs to change. Let me pull it up here. Screen share. Okay. What needs to change is I have this sliced and you see right here in front of the, at the front, there's these squiggly lines, back and forth squiggle lines. Let me zoom in a little more. The kind of yellowish orange lines right here in the middle, uh, in at the, the slope there, those don't need to be there. They don't need to be there. They could be straight lines that would print faster and better. Um, but the Prusa Slicer adds a lot of these little squiggle solid infill lines that it doesn't need to. It just doesn't need to. And supposedly they're fixing that in the next slide, in the next update. I don't know. Ah, uh, have I set it to not bed level before the next print? That's a good call. We don't need to. Bamboo did fix that. Bamboo fixed that in their, in their fork. Uh, Super Slicer fixed that in their fork. And I'm really hoping that, uh, that they will roll that in. Good call. Let me remove the G29. We don't need to do another level. Removed. Slice. Um, yeah, Bamboo fixed that in Bamboo Studio, which is excellent. Hobby ADHD with the 10 bucks. Thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pay for some of the filament we're using. I, like we're using a lot, I know. Thank you. All right, let's get this Benchy on here and see what it looks like. I'm probably not gonna stick around the stream for the whole Benchy. Maybe I'll post the results on Instagram, but uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna get it going so we can see how it go, how it goes with the accelerations and everything. Yeah. I really need a USB hub on this computer.
learn to remove the G29 the hard way. Alright, let's go. Longer lines print faster, absolutely. Uh, sorry, where was I at here? Prusha doesn't have enough speed and acceleration control in your opinion. Really? I I kind of understand that and I kind of don't. Like, I know Super Slicer has much finer control over ex what accelerations and, and the speeds, but I don't find that I need it. Um, except for if I'm going for a speedboat Benchy, I don't really see a need for the additional controls. For everyday printing? I don't know. I don't personally find the need. Alright, heat up and get the base layer going down. I set the base layer very slow so it can get good adherence and uh, I set the base layer to 25 millimeters a second and 1500 acceleration I think or maybe 500 I forget already but then everything after that is set fast. Let me I'll show you what I slice this at real quick. Screen share. Okay. Print settings. Here's what I slice this print at. 150 perimeter, 100 on small perimeters, 125 external, 175 on infill, 125 on solid infill, 90 on top solid, 100 on bridge, 125 on gap, 250 for travel, 25 on base layer. Perimeters, 2,000 acceleration, 2,500 on infill, 1,500 on bridging, 500 on the first layer, and 3,000 for default. I also, I also disabled auto cooling, so we have no layer time limits. None of that. And yeah, cooling the max. So we shall see what happens here. Is it going to work? I don't know. Super Slicer. I, you know, like, I use Super Slicer. I have it. I just... I don't feel a need for all the controls it has most of the time. See, now I need... My Z offset could stand to be down. Before my Z offset was too tight. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see how this goes. Prusa Slicer sounds more like an everyday slicer. It is. And for my everyday printing, it's what I use. If I'm looking to get something done as fast as possible, I will use Super Slicer. But it's rare that I'm doing that these days, other than testing, you know? Hardest setting to get right, Z offset. Absolutely true. I prefer the Z Offset Wizard in Marlin. Uh, I wish that more companies enabled that in their firmware. I think the Z Offset Wizard works really well. And I don't love this kind of like, eh, just set it as you go. Yeah, that base layer's crap. Oh well. Oh well. What maximum flow rate is this getting? I have it set to 15. I would be amazed if it actually hits 15. Uh, I have it set to 15 millimeters uh, per second per second, but cubed, whatever. Why is it bad? The Z offset was bad. So the first layer doesn't have enough squish on the filament. It was kind of just sitting on top of the bed. So it adhered, but not well. Here's our problem. This print just has such small 
um, such a small footprint that I don't know if we're going to really max the speed out that much. Even at 2,000 millimeters acceleration. I mean, it's doing pretty good. It's going. We're going. Already getting part curling on the, the nose. 200% size. That's a good call. Scale it up. That's a good call. It's going. It's going. Is it going to actually work for the dam? I don't know. I mean, it's printing, and it's not under extruding. Uh, good alternative for the Pi Zero 2W. Uh, I don't really have one at the moment. Um, I mean, I have one. I have Pi Zero 2W, but no, I honestly don't have a good recommendation right now. I wish we could get them. That's all I could say. Uh, any opinion on the 0.4 versus 0.6 as the new default? My problem with it is... I mostly agree with Tom on 0.6 being a better universal nozzle size. I mostly agree with that. Except for that so many parts are designed for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Like when I, as a 3D designer myself, when I design parts, I design them based around the extrusion width of a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Yes, arachne slicing can make up for that with a 0.6, but not, it's super sloppy. It, it's not as good as a 0.4 millimeter nozzle in that regard. So it's not a replacement for it in my opinion. It's just not. Um, I prefer a 0.4 millimeter nozzle most of the time. I run my Ender 5 Plus. I've got a 0.8 in that right now. I've got Revo in my uh, Ender 3. I'm going to be putting a Revo in the Ender 5 Plus very soon in a full build bit video that's coming up. Um, yeah. So, I don't think it... I think 0.4 is here to stay. <clears throat> but that 0.6 is excellent if you need it. Have I ever tried the uh, the double extrusion width on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle? I don't think I have. Are you liking the BQH2? I like it. Um, it's not the right thing for the Ender 5 Plus. I'm taking it off the Ender 5 Plus and putting it on my uh, Cobra Max probably. So I like the BQH2. It's not gr it's not perfect, uh, but it's a solid all around direct drive setup. It the noise of the traction annoys me but I got used to it. The problem on the Ender 5 Plus or on a Core XY machine, in, or not, that's not Core XY, but a Core XY machine would be, it's so wide. Yeah. Oh, I just put it away. I have one here, another one here. Um, it's so wide that I actually limited my X-axis dimensions on the Ender 5 Plus because of it. I lost like 20 millimeters of build volume because of using that. So, if you print more small parts versus large stuff, yeah, like that, it really depends on what you're doing. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. 
Have the same issue with the Ender 5 Plus and Hamera. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I, I would believe that. So I'm getting, I'm ditching that off of the Ender 5 Plus. I think it's better suited to a machine like my Cobra Max, which is like this. So the extruder can, isn't going to limit the uh, build volume. Uh, so I'm going to put the BQH2 on my Ender, on my Cobra Max to convert that to direct drive. And the Ender 5 Plus is going to, um, it's going to a Revo, but a more traditional extruder nozzle setup. Uh, you won the V2, the H2 V2, and you converted it to regular Volcano parts. Yeah, I don't like that they went to this whole like their own proprietary four millimeter nozzle. I'm not a fan of that. Gonna put the Micro Swiss NG on my Ender 5 Plus. That, that's probably a pretty good fit. I'd like to play with that, but I don't have any reason to uh, right now. I'm going to be, when I put the um, H2 on my Cobra Max, I'm converting it to Volcano as well. I'm going to make it a Volcano setup <clears throat> on the Cobra Max because I plan, I run on my Cobra Max a 1mm or 1.2mm nozzle all the time. Because exactly like we're talking about here, if I'm printing things on my Cobra Max, they're going to be big. They're not going to be little little things. So why waste my time with a 0.4 millimeter or even a 0.8 millimeter nozzle at that point? <clears throat> I mean, this isn't that pretty, but it's getting it done. Definitely not the prettiest Benchia on the block. Uh, do you see Prusa releasing a Mark IV anytime soon? No. Uh, I think they 100% have the Mark IV either in development or developed. I think they will not release the Mark IV until they widespread release the XL. I think they'd be shooting themselves in the foot to do it. Um, they might cannibalize a market where some people who are loyal to Prusa would want the XL because it's the new machine that has a lot of nice new features. And I bet a lot of those same features are going to end up in the Mark IV, obviously in a smaller and different scale. And MMU-3, that's possible. I've heard the MMU-3 is going to have a, a cutter in it. Uh, it like the bamboo does instead of the like ramming so uh, Do you think the Ender 3 S1 is a good printer a lot of people say it's Creality version of the Prusa I have no experience with the sprite extruder to say I doubt <coughs> I doubt that it's as good as a Prusa um and don't get me wrong, I like my Creality machines. I sold my Prusa. I didn't like my Mark III. I didn't like it. It wasn't a machine for me. Um, but their reliability, their support that comes with their machines is hard to argue with. And so, I don't know. I have an Ender 5 S1 here that I need to get around to playing with. Uh, that'll be my first time playing with a Sprite Extruder. But I've heard a lot of mixed things about the Sprite Extruder, so I don't, I don't know. I would definitely not call it Creality's Persia, I don't think. Creality's Mark III, whatever. I mean, under extruding on infill for sure. We're back to under extruding on infill, so 170 is pushing it over the flow rate of the nozzle, or the hot end. Not a big deal there. Is Persia Mint worth the, the money? I don't really think so. Um, I don't know. To me, no. Polyterra, Polymaker Polyterra, I can get it from Amazon. I can have, I can order a case of it and have it tomorrow. And you can do that with Prishamint now through Printed Solid. And Printed Solid, they're great folks. I love those folks. Um, so that's a bonus, but eh, no. I like Polymaker. It meets my needs um, for everything I'm doing, so I don't really see spending that much more. 
at the university, uh, at university, the Mark III's constantly suck. At home, my Mark III works just fine. Some are good, some are on Monday models. Fadish Dragon on a Bed Slinger. Hmm? Started using uh, Voxel PA. It's on par with Hatchbox. I haven't tried either of those. Uh, my experiences with Hatchbox have been pretty meh, uh, personally. But I haven't tried their PLA, so... Uh, yeah, my Mark III was one of my machines that broke the most. It was broken out of the box when I got it. The thermistor was broken. It it rubbed through on wiring, and all kinds of things went wrong with my Mark III, and I kind of just got over it. So... Ah, oh, the Prusimum refill looked great, but they upped the price to... Ah, uh, I didn't hear that. That sucks. I don't pay attention to their filament, so... They upped the price on the regular stuff and then kept the price of the refill at the, the lower price. That sucks. It is what it is. Everything is price increasing, but... I don't know. We all know that a lot of it is just... Inflation, so... <clears throat> Alright. This is printing. Alright. I'm gonna my Hindu three with yeah. Let me uh let me switch to the iPhone cam and show you a closer up view of this. There's some obvious quality issues with the perimeter, but it's not under extruded. It's getting the job done. I wouldn't call this a good result, but I did zero tuning. I just threw speed at it, so. You know, I just said balls to the wall, let's go. I don't know. At least the spammers finally left, yeah. It looks like Airy. Are you saying Airy One? Airy One filaments out of brand, out of business. Now that would suck if that's true. I really like their silk PLAs. If that's the case, I might have to stock up. I have no information on that. Where'd you hear that? I wish that. Okay, that's a really good point. Minted 3D said that the uh, the Mark Threes at their university fail pretty often and the repairability isn't great because the cable management on the hot end sucks. Agreed. I, the Prusa, in my opinion, the Prusa Mark III is designed, it wasn't designed with user friendliness in mind as far as repairability is concerned. Like building it from a kit, it's not as true. As somebody who designs things in 3D printing, built custom cars and engineered my own parts for cars, it's not built with assemble and disassembly in mind, and that really annoys me. Uh, looks like I love their stuff, but no. Uh. Didn't reply to your email, huh? No, that sucks. Uh, I'll have to look into that. They had they had their Ultra Silks on sale last week on Black Friday. I included them in my Black Friday video. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. It's the first I've heard of it. I don't have any contacts with everyone. I actually don't have any contacts with many brands. Um, I don't know why. There are plenty of brands that I just don't have much of a relationship with. Or I did and they don't talk to me anymore or whatever. So... There are some brands I have great relationships with, some not so much. Don't know. No rhyme or reason. I didn't really intend to sit here, hang out, and uh, let this fully print, but it's going pretty well. It's only at 18% on the percentage reading, though, so. All right, folks, I think we're going to wrap it up. I'll post a finished result on Instagram with the finished Benchy. 
I think, but yeah, that is the Elegoo Neptune 3. Uh, my voice is starting to get strained, so I think I need to call it. But overall, I gotta say, I didn't expect much of this printer, but I'm so far impressed. Uh, I have to play with this more, and I actually might be far more impressed with this machine than I expected to be. So, I'm gonna have to play with it, play around. Folks were saying, I'm gonna change the link in the description to Elegoo's website. I have it on Amazon right now, but Elegoo's website is cheaper. They don't seem to have inventory on their website in the US anyway, so eh. Ah, uh, when I did Revo beta testing, I designed a minimal Bowden setup. Yeah, like, it uh, really makes sense to make things easy to service and maintain. Uh, percent reading seems to be more based on the G-code. It is, yeah, I, I don't know how accurate it is, but thank you all for being here. We had a really good stream. Thank you for having this really good engagement. I didn't post about this any time, any... I, I literally posted about this an hour before I went live and you folks turned up. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, I didn't advertise this worth a damn. I will have more unboxing lives in the near future. I've got the Ender 5 S1 to unbox yet. I'm supposed to have an FLSON V400 coming in to play with. And I have, should I say it? It's, it's not, expectations. Put your expectations down here. But I have something I, I didn't, I might as well tell you. If you're still here in the stream, I'll tell you. I have a Lulzbot Taz 5 from like 10 years ago. Not 10 years. What is it? Like an 8-year-old printer? Lulzbot sent me a Taz 5. They found a new inbox Taz 5 in Australia. So almost a decade-old printer that they found in Australia, new inbox, and they got it for me. Um, and if you can't guess, my reanimator project is why they did that. So I'm going to be doing a live stream of building a new inbox TAS 5. We're going to print with it, see how bad it is. And then we are going to go ahead and bump over to uh, cult totally customizing it and building a modern TAS 5. Am I going to do a Mercury 1 conversion on my Ender 5 Plus? I didn't want to give it away, but yes. My Ender 5 Plus is getting converted to Mercury One Core XY. I'm going to do a full build video on that one. Friend Lights with the, with the uh, Super Chat. Thank you so much for that. Thank you everybody who sent Super Chats. You really di clearly directly helped me do what I do. So thank you so much. Um, 30 to 35. I, hey. Like the 40, we were averaging I think about 40 folks in here today. So that's excellent in my book. Awesome. Thank you, folks. Uh, but yes, I am going to be building a um, great to see an unbox of the V400. I'm really looking forward to playing with that. It'll be my first out-of-the-box clipper machine, so I'm really interested in that. But yes, I am doing a Mercury 1 Core XY conversion on my Ender 5 Plus. We will be doing that. Uh, going with an LGX extruder, a Revo hot end, and uh, a lot of... I'm going to customize it my own. In fact, I'll show you real quick. I made I made this for it already so it's a Revo nozzle holder it's going to mount to the frame so yep but the, the theme is going to be pink and black on that one so yeah yeah I'm going to use the uh, Revo on that I'm going to use the R3D is sending me one of their Revos, which it's just a Revo nozzle with their own heatsink design. It's nothing like better, but um, I'm going to be running that setup on the Ender 5, and I'm fingers crossed. I'm hoping I don't have any inside information on this. Don't take this as any news or anything. I'm hoping that they do a um, a high flow nozzle I setup. Found this on the web. Thank you, Siri. Um, I'm hoping that they come out with the higher flow nozzle setup for the Revo so I can really push that thing. I run a 0.8 millimeter nozzle on it now, so I'm not going to be limiting myself in that regard, but I really want bigger ones. So the Revo holder looks great. Awesome. I'm going to release this design. It's for 2020 extrusions. So 
you know, you can mount it on the outside of a rail like this if you don't have rollers in the way. So, yep. Uh, check out the Make Vector Duct. I made it for the LGX and V6. It should fit. I'm going to design my own tool head for the Mercury One. Thank you, though. Um, yeah, series back. Yeah, I am going to design my own setup for that. Um, just because the extruder and, and hot end assembly that I'm using is just not supported by the Ava or or the uh, afterburner. So I got to I got to make my own. So I, I enjoy designing things. I don't get enough time to do it lately. So I'm going to make myself do it. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thank you so much. This has been an absolutely excellent stream. Way better than I could have hoped for. I expected like five people in here today. So thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. And yeah, check out the links in the description down below. There are affiliate links, my links to my other social medias. I'll post the final product of this print and maybe maybe a video about the overview of the printer on TikTok and on Instagram probably. So, all right, folks, thank you for being here. I will catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye.